your glasses up, put your glasses up, a toast to the men. Toasters, I want to talk about the Travis Rudolph murder trial. It's a big deal. Getting a lot of coverage. Now, Travis Rudolph is a former NFL player. He didn't do a lot of great things, even good things in NFL. He didn't get a, a long-term contract. I don't think he elevated higher than the practice squad. Um, he was on a few teams, practice squad, but uh, that was the furthest he, he elevated. But nonetheless, he's on trial for murder, for murder, man. And this is something that we really need to touch on and talk about uh, how this all came to be, how it transpired, and how, as men, we can avoid these types of things. Now, apparently, Travis was dating a young lady, and... You know, like a lot of women, <laughs> this young lady went through his phone. She went through his phone. She saw that he was uh, engaging in some extracurricular activities with other women. And she had a fit. She had a fit. They got into it. Um, got physical. She got physical with him. Now, she says he, he slammed her. Uh, but the video shows the camera, the outside camera of his mom's home where he was residing shows that he did escort, escort her out the home, but I didn't see, you know, any, any, um, you know, extreme physicality, any hitting or slapping, anything like that. But he did definitely escort her outside the home. And uh, of course she didn't like that. She didn't like that. She proceeded later to contact her brother via text. Uh, telling him what happened, allegedly saying that uh, he got physical with her. And in the text, in the text to her brother, she said, shoot his place up, shoot it up. This is all in text. This is all revealed while she was on the stand in court. He gets three other guys to go with him to address the situation with Travis. And uh, Travis's brother answers the door. And as soon as he comes out, man, they start putting fisticuffs on him. You know, later, Travis comes out, see what's going on. His brother's getting handled by four guys. Travis has an AR-15 style uh, gun or pistol, and he starts letting off shots, man, 39 shots. One gentleman was killed, and that's why he's on trial for murder on the surface, because he let off those shots, killed a man. But how did he get to that point? Now, it's important to state that this young lady is married. Yeah, so she out, she's out of bounds. She's out of pocket already. She's married. So, uh, yeah, nobody's perfect, but you definitely can't be getting caught up in no mess like this when you're married. You know, she should have just took that L, went her away. But now you got a gentleman that's dead. You know, I'm sure her marriage didn't last. And then you got a gentleman that's on trial who I believe should not be on trial. Now, this happened in Florida. So they have stand your ground law. And so I, I think ultimately he's going to be uh, exonerated or found uh, not guilty. Um, well, I don't know about exonerated because he has been indicted. He's on trial, but found not guilty, I believe, uh, because they did come to his residence. It was discovered that these guys did have guns on them. And the text message, she said, shoot his place up. Now, when you say shoot his place up, you can't really determine or dictate whether somebody's going to get killed or not. So at the least, she's instigating an attempt to murder or assault with a deadly weapon, at the least. Because you can't pinpoint <laughs> where you're going to shoot and know that no one's going to be in that area when you shoot up the place. 
you know, people get shot and drive by, drive by home shootings all the time. So uh, at the least, I think it's aggravated assault with a with a weapon or uh, attempted murder. And she instigated all of this, man. She she instigated all of this. She started and ignited all of this to this extent. Um, I don't even think the brother should be should have been indicted, man. You know, I don't know what the grand jury was thinking. What was presented before them was withheld because a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of times evidence is withheld and, and knowledge is withheld from the grand jury, and people are indicted in that manner all the time because evidence is withheld. Oh yes, yeah, a shady industry. Yeah, the law, the judicial system is shady, 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 and so I don't really believe this guy should have been indicted. But I do believe he'll be found not guilty. Uh, George Jim Zimmerman, uh, of course, was in Florida. And he used the stay your ground law as his defense when he got in a scuffle with uh, the teen Trayvon Martin, rest in peace. Trayvon did not have a weapon. These guys did have a weapon. These guys went to uh, Travis' residence. You know, uh, so it's going to be interesting. You know, we know the law, the judicial system is not colorblind. So it's going to be interesting. Zimmerman got off. So we're going to see what happens to, happens to this young man. But how can this be avoided? Brothers, we got to be careful, man, who we stack our penis in. We got to be careful beyond sticking your penis in certain women, who we invite into our circle, who we invite into our home. And we got to be on the up and up and keep them at bay and let them know what it is and what it ain't if you're going to go that route with certain types of women. Um, that's from Travis' side. That's where he messed up, right? On the other side, her brother and his guys, but mainly her brother. Brothers, we got to stop moving on emotion when the women we love and care about feed us information. We got to stop that. Because what we're doing is We're excluding these females we love and care about. We're excluding them from the general population of females. We're excluding them from the, the bigger pool of females. But the truth is, your mom, your aunt, your daughter, your sister is capable, capable of doing what the average woman would do on the street. She's capable. She's emotional, she's erratic, she's irrational, capable of being those things, just like any other woman. And I know we put these women on pedestals, these women we love and care about, we put them on pedestals. And I think subconsciously, maybe even consciously, but definitely subconsciously, we think, yeah, they would never do what those women are doing. They would never move like those women. And it's just not true. You see a certain side of your sister, you see a certain side of your mother, your daughter, your auntie, your wife, your girlfriend. They show you, for the most part, they show you what they want you to see. It's, it's facts. Women have many, many faces. They have many faces. They are groomed or evolve into knowing how to adapt. That's part of their survival. They know how to fit in. They know how to adapt. They know how to be agreeable when they want to. That's how they, that's, that's how they survive. That's part of their survival kit to moving around in society. They have to be adaptable. They have to. 
you know, with men, we, we're sort of different, man. We, we're not so adaptable. We don't like change so much. Um, most times we'll bump heads with other men because we don't want to adapt. We'll be a lone wolf a lot of times before we adapt. That's just, that's just how we're built. Look at the animal kingdom. Everybody wants that top spot. Everybody's challenging to be that top spot to get the top of the line women. And uh, a lot of times, if we can't be the top dog, we'll be a lone wolf. We'll do it on our own. Women don't move like that so much. They want to be a part of groups. And that's not a bad thing. It's just it is what it is. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not criticizing it. It is what it is. This is what makes us us. And so they will adapt. And they'll show you a certain face to get along, go along, or go along to get along. It's not, it's not bad. It's not good. It's just, it's what it is. Oh, um, so we got to be careful about just taking the word of these women we love and care about and just moving emotionally. Got to sit back and think and question things, investigate. They move rationally. A man was killed because men were moving emotionally and were uh, energized. I had a battery put in their back by an emotional female that at least one of the brothers loved and cared about her brother. He loved her and cared about him, I'm sure. He moved on emotion. That's been happening since the beginning of time. This is just, it is what it is, man. Uh, that's one of the beautiful things about women is their emotion, right? Is their, I want to say fickle ways or moods, you know, colorful nature, sometimes erratic, uh, the excitement they bring makes what our stability and our order and our discipline if everything is done rooted in righteousness man you can have a beautiful union you can have a beautiful life a beautiful world but that's not the case everybody's not going to move through righteousness all men are not going to move through righteousness and, and use their gifts to push the culture forward and, and uh, to do right by humanity. All men are not, just like all women, are not going to use their gifts and strengths to push humanity forward and do the right thing. Uh, so you got to be cognizant of that, the nature of women. That thing you love about them, uh, that's a beautiful thing, but it also could be poison. But you got to stay disciplined and really recognize that your daughter, mother, sister, wife, girlfriend is capable of doing what that same woman did out there that you're criticizing or critiquing. It's just the way it is. Um, we just saw this not too long ago, I guess a year or two ago. The baby, the rapper, the baby gets into it with his kid's mom. They have conflict. Her brother gets involved. The baby and the brother run into each other at a bowling alley, and, and the brother gets the brake speed off of him. It happens. I've been guilty of that. I guess about five or six years ago, man, my oldest daughter called me, and I uh, heard her boyfriend stand together and uh she called me crying and upset saying that uh i need to come do something with him and she starts talking but i'm not hearing any of that i lost hearing my baby girl crying and upset and uh i'm like i'm on my way now from where i was at the time where i was living where she was it was like a 40 minute drive but I knew a guy 
who's still in the game uh, that I grew up with. And I was called him. I said, hey, man, this was going on. I'm on my way down there. But I need you to get over there before me. You know, because it's going to take me about 40 minutes. So he called her and checked on her, whatever, say, hey, I'm on my way, whatever. And he hit me back. He's like, book, I understand, man, that's your daughter. He's like, I know how you feel, daughter calling you crying. He said, but man, what I'm getting, he never lay hands on her. They just having this little immature spat, getting into it. And they taking the cover from each other and they just doing petty, immature stuff. But he never put hands on her. He's like, now nah, I can go by there. But, you know, I'm bringing the young gladiators with me and they ain't talking. So right then I had to think about it. I was like, damn, I had to calm down. And I had to be like, damn, okay. He didn't put hands on her. I've been that young guy with the young woman before and we doing just petty, immature stuff. Just, just crazy stuff, but no physicality. I've been there. So I got to be logical. Even though that's my daughter, I got to be logical. And uh, I called it off. I called it off. Later spoke to her and told her, hey, listen, y'all got to work that stuff out. But really don't involve me like that if he ain't put hands on you. You're my daughter, you know. Um, yeah, so listen, I've been there. I get it. And that thing could have went ugly. It, it was going to go ugly. So I get it. But I'm telling you, we can't move like that. That could have changed the trajectory of my life, her life, young man's life. You know, lives could have ended. My homie's life, it, it, everything. It, it just... Man, a domino effect. You know, um, the stuff happens all the time, man. All the time. And um, it's nothing new. You know, um, John Morant, John Morant, his, the NBA phenom, young star. There was a situation where his mom got into it with the finish line employee some kind of argument going on and um, she calls up her son to handle the situation. Her NBA star son. She calls him up. The mom calls him up to handle the situation. He shows up with six guys and they him this employee up, this finish line employee up in the back room. He locks himself in a room and won't come out. Dangerous game. Dangerous game. And that's his mom. So I just told you a story about my daughter. Now you're talking about a man's mom. This case here, his sister, the guy's sister. Man, we got to be smarter, guys. I, like I said, I get it. But we can't move. We can't allow women to put that battery in our backs. Black men have been lynched because of what a lion or emotional white woman has said. Men have been killed or beat up because of what a woman has said that was not the truth or the total truth. We got to smarten up. We got to get more discipline. And we got to be honest about women, all women, the beauty of them and the darkness of them. And, and uh, we can't exclude our women, our loved ones from that, the women. Because they don't exclude us from it. They don't exclude us from it, man. They... 
the things they know men would do out here in the street, they don't exclude us from that. But we see them as angels. We see them <laughs> as pure. And it's like, nah, nah, she wouldn't do that. She wouldn't roll like that. And we just move. We just go without thinking. Yeah. I think Big Boy had a line in the song, Miss Jackson, Outcast song, Big Boy's line. It's like, I can't remember verbatim, but he's like, uh, his baby mama be tripping, having, having dudes come up to the studio trying to fight him. Man, that's a, that's a normal occurrence. <laughs> that's, that's real. That's real. Y'all gonna listen to that song, Miss Jackson, and listen to Big Boy's line. Yeah, that's, that's real, man. I remember the movie Minister Society. Um, Kane and O'Dog beat the brakes off a guy because Kane slept with the woman. She later said she was pregnant. He denied it was his. Basically called her a hoe. She told her cousin. Cousin approaches old dog and Kane in the projects about the disrespect. And they beat the brakes off of him. Later on, the cousin gets with a few guys. Kane is getting ready to move. He got his homies out there, old dog and a few other guys helping him pack to move. I think they were going to Kansas, I think. And uh, the female's cousins, hey, mobbing, creeping in the car, mashed up with a few brothers. And they let off a lot of shots. And people died, people got hit because this brother was moving on emotion off of what his female cousin told him. It's been going on. It's in movies, it's in real life. Stuff happens. It'll never stop. But I think with more awareness, brothers checking brothers, holding brothers accountable, and women checking women. Women checking women on this mess. We could bring it down. We can bring those curses, the curses down. We can, we can bring a decrease to them. But uh, a lot of brothers have died, man, behind females. A lot of brothers. A lot of brothers are in jail, falsely accused of rape because of females. Uh, a lot of females have gotten caught having sex with men. You know, and they got them caught either by young girls getting caught by their fathers or women getting caught by their husbands or boyfriend, and they holler rape. And somebody gets killed or somebody ends up in the penitentiary. That happens a lot. It happens a lot. Yeah, so we, uh, we just got to smarten up, man. We got to smarten up. Yeah. And come to think of it, I had another situation where I almost acted a fool. Um, but I think she knew not to tell me. Uh, my mom's husband, rest in peace, he passed. But uh, this was years ago, man, maybe, maybe 15 years ago. My oldest brother uh, told me, Hey man, um, mom told me John's over there tripping. I was like, tripping how? It's like, man, he uh he didn't want her to go somewhere. They were arguing, and she had to make an appointment. And uh, he hid her glasses. <laughs> now my mom is blind as a bat, man. She can't really see too well without her glasses. Heavy prescription. And uh, he hit her glasses, but she still had to make this appointment, man. So she was on the highway 
going like 25 miles an hour. So I'm like, what? Man, she could have died. She could have got hit. Like, she could have died. I was heated. So I told my brother, like, man, I'm about to put hands on him. I said, nah, nah, but nah, but she, she didn't want me to tell you. Nah, don't, don't, don't do it. That she, she told the right person, and my brother wasn't going to do anything. But uh, by him telling me, it did ignite something in me, and I wanted to put hands on him. Um, but I don't even know the whole story, because it's, it's two sides, right? But because that was my mom, it ignited something in me. I didn't care about the whole story. And lives could have changed. Yeah. So I'm not innocent in this. Um, this stuff is in the past. The thing with my daughter about five, six years ago, my mom situation that was uh, about 20, 25 years ago, maybe, and uh, maybe 20 years. And uh, but hey, man, I'm not saying I won't do something tomorrow, man. Probably not. I'm smarter and wiser. But um, yeah, we got to move differently, guys. So yeah, smarten up. These women are beautiful. They're lovely. You know, they could be angels, man. They could be the, the most beautiful, nurturing thing in your life. There's a dark side, just like there's a dark side to you. All right? Let me know what y'all think in the comments, toasters. From me to you, love. Peace.